Hey guys, it's Dave here. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're faring okay out there in these rough markets. We've had a pretty rough week. I think we can thank Jerome Powell and this Silicon Valley bank going under for uh, really pushing down the overall markets. And now we're seeing Rocket Lab back in the threes, a place that I think some people may find uncomfortable for the stock to be and others are very excited to have it there so they can add more shares. It really depends where you are on your investment. But anyways, ever since the Q4 results were released last week, I've been going over the numbers and trying to update my models on how much I think the company is going to be worth in the future and is worth today. It's extremely difficult to do. I have to try to piece together lots of different little clues that Adam Spice or Peter Back or other people mention and uh, make a lot of assumptions about what's going to happen in the future, make a lot of guesses. Your assumptions, your guesses may be different from mine and may materially impact what valuation that would justify in the future. So as you're watching this video, I encourage you to think about what numbers you would put into each of these fields. And this video is gonna be very spreadsheet intensive, but I think it's extremely important to do this kind of work when you're investing a large amount of money in an individual company. So you really know the company very well and are comfortable with your investment and what you're paying for it and what you think it'll be worth. Before we dive into that, if you could throw me a like and subscribe if you haven't already, it would be appreciated. I come back with a lot of videos on Rocket Lab, space companies, and investing in general, and every subscriber is a huge help. With that out of the way, let's dive into my new updated financial valuation model for Rocket Lab. So I'm still not entirely happy with how I have some of these numbers. I think there's still a lot of playing around I need to do with this to change things slightly, but I do want to share what I have so far in terms of projections for the future and what I think the company is going to be worth. Uh, starting off with, we're trying to figure out how much money they're going to be making in the future, and then from there we'll figure out profits and stuff like that, but just based on money. So we know 2023, we're looking at about 15 electron launches, according to to the company and then I uh, I'm estimating about 19, 2024, 20, and then 2025, 20, 23, and then kind of hitting a steady state around 24 launches. I did up it to about 26 in 2028. I mean, this is all very subjective. It could potentially go up higher than 24, but we know the goal the company's looking at is for about two per month or 24 launches per year. So that's where I got those numbers. Now, in terms of gross margins on those launches, uh, I'm saying about flat in 2023, so on 15 launches, I'm thinking with a revenue of 7.5 per launch, we're looking at about a break even uh, before that cadence continues to improve and they start to really make money on the Electron. And obviously you multiply how much they make per launch times the number of launches to get the revenue. This is just for Electron, by the way. So we're looking at about 112 and a half million in 2023 for Electron, of which unfortunately, uh, not none of that is profit according to this model anyway. So uh, 2024, we're looking at better gross margins as we climb the cadence and we get better at reusability. We got 30%, 2025, I went up to 48, and they have guided for low 50% uh, gross margin rates for Electron once they hit that two per month. And you can see where I'm landing on gross profit for Electron. We're hitting about $128 million in five years from now, 2028. And by the way, I know 2028 seems like a long time, but I like to look far out into the future and give my investments a lot of time to execute on their plans because over the short term, anything can happen, whether it be the Fed changing interest rates or geopolitical events like the Ukraine situation. Uh, so much can change in the short term that's out of the company's control, and I like to plan at least five years out. So that's just the Electron part of the business. Now we have Neutron and we're expecting a single launch towards the end of 2024. And Peter said in recent interviews that he expects that to ramp kind of slowly, not really an Astra kind of thing where he's going to th think that he'll jump to like a launch a day or anything like that. So these numbers I was really unsure about and I'd love your input if you think this is too conservative or not, but I have three launches in 2025. I think he said something around three 
for 2025 in one of his interviews. And then I have it doubling, going to six, and then nine, and then 16. And I'm really uh, not completely sure how the market for Neutron is going to shape up in terms of like what's a steady state in the future of launches per year the market will support. Uh, we know the TAM for space is looking at a uh, launch is looking at something like 30 billion, but obviously that's various uh, types of launch vehicles and Neutron is just specifically a medium launcher. So uh, I gave them 16 launches in 2028, uh, revenue per launch. So the Falcon 9, which is a heavier vehicle than the Neutron, is looking at uh, 60, 65 million from what I understand. So I put 50 million per launch for Neutron. I felt like that seemed reasonable. It's slightly smaller than the Falcon 9, slightly newer, designed from the ground up to be reusable. So hopefully they can come in uh, decently below those Falcon 9 costs. Otherwise, they would have a lot of trouble competing for sure. So uh, 50 million per launch, that obviously means one launch, $50 million in 2024. And you just multiply the number of launches by the revenue per launch to see how much revenue Neutron is bringing in. All the way out in 2028, we're looking at $896 million. Not a bad chunk of change. That's well outstriping the uh, Electron. But that's, of course, because Neutron, you're charging so much more. It uh, has a much larger payload. Uh, in terms of gross margins, this was another tough one. Obviously, as they're ramping, they're going to be in the negative. So I put negative 50% gross margin for the first year. They're only with one launch. And we saw similar trends with Electron. You've really got to get that cadence up in order to become positive. So I'm still negative with three launches, still negative with six launches, turning positive on Neutron in 2027. Uh, this could be a little bearish, maybe... Um, maybe a little too conservative and they could turn a profit on Neutron sooner, especially with that reusability factor coming into play. Uh, I just like to be safe with my models and not, uh, you know, get out over my skis and then then uh, get disappointed. So I'm only at 35% margins with uh, 16 launches and would assume that would continue to grow beyond 2028. And hopefully you would think it would hit at least that 50% uh, probably be more really since the vehicle is designed from the get-go for reusability whereas Electron was not so I like to think it would have better margins eventually than Electron would but that's where I am in 2028 we're looking at uh, 896 million in revenue 35 percent margin which would give you 400 million dollars in uh, gross profit that's not net that's gross so there's still a lot of other things that need to get subtracted from that so we have 400 million for neutron, 128 million for electron, and uh, total for launch electron plus, plus neutron. That's revenue, not gross profit. We're looking at over a billion dollars. Uh, nice to see those numbers turning into billions instead of millions for Rocket Lab. Uh, then, of course, we have space systems. This one is a little harder pr to project as well because we're not given like launch numbers where we know how much a launch costs and they're saying how many launches there's going to be for a year. So what I did is I just uh, estimated we're looking about 35% growth in 2023 for space systems. I think it's got to slow down because we're not acquiring all these new companies like we did in the past. This is now all going to be internal organic growth so you can't just make an acquisition and have a ton uh, of growth fall to the bottom line because of that so i put 35 percent uh 35 percent growing basically across the board every year 35 percent and then 30 percent uh this was pretty subjective and i think i was a little too low on this to be honest because the company has guided that over the long run we expect um space systems and launch to be about 50 50 and the way this came out we see space systems is really winning but as that neutron revenue uh, ramps up in 2028 i actually have space systems underperforming launch so uh, perhaps this is another number that i should be bumping up for 2028. 
So uh, we take the gross margin number from that, which is around 50% as well. I think they said they wanted gross margins on space systems to be around 50%. Solero's 30, that's kind of the lowest one, and then the others should be higher to make up for it. Uh, and that gave us a gross profit number of $438 million. Now, the big wild card here is space applications, and we haven't really gotten any information on this from the company other than that they're thinking about it, and they would like to do it in the future. So I really don't have enough to model it, and I do think that the more space applications they do, that will hit into space systems because they'll be making and launching their own satellites versus selling them. So if we do get those space applications revenue you have to subtract one from space systems for now just to be simple i'm not going to model for it i'm going to leave it at zero until we get more information and just go with what our product mix we have right now so uh, looking at our total revenues we can see that by 2028 we're looking at over two billion dollars in revenue of that 966 million dollars is profit and the cost of goods sold would be 1 billion and 52 million. So those are uh, the numbers I'm thinking of in terms of uh, what they'll be making in the future and how I landed on this. There's been several statements made recently by Adam Spice that helped me land on this. First of all, he said uh, electron gross margin, a low 50% number. First neutron launch is Q4 2024. Uh, he also said that uh, he thinks neutron spending will continue to be high and that we will crest the neutron spending hump probably sometime in the middle of next year as we get closer and closer to the launch date in Q4. They also said we'll have 15 million launches of Electron in 2023, around 7.5 million per launch is the goal. And there's also some interesting comments in the Q&A that uh, I'm taking. So um, he basically said there's an uptick in spending and the forecasted Q1 adjusted EBITDA, which is in or earnings before interest, depreciation, amortization, uh, that number is actually a bit higher than analysts expected. And he said, I don't think we're looking at the low watermark as far as adjusted EBITDA loss in the quarter because again, spending has continued to ramp up. But I also don't think that we're looking at that it's going to be dramatically higher than where it is. We feel like we're kind of in a new range of spending on the program. So uh, he did mention in those results that they expect the first quarter adjusted EBITDA loss to range between 28 and $30 million. And these are all factors that I'm putting into the model you'll see in, the, in a minute. Before we go to the new version of the model, this is my previous one that I made when I started looking at the company. And I really didn't have much in the way of Neutron in here because I didn't really know how it was going to shape up. And I think the, the big downfall of this model is that I didn't put nearly enough spending for Neutron in. I really underestimated the amount it was going to cost. We've had Adam Spice say recently the $250 million number that they said they were going to spend on Neutron. That's just to get the first rocket to the pad for launch. But they're going to make four rockets at least, and there's a lot more money to it. So the spending is actually going to be higher than we think. But the plus side of that is that I didn't really model in any Neutron revenue either. So this new version that I'm going to show you, we have Neutron revenue as well as costs. And we can see in the future, in the long run, we're going to make more money. It's just the short term, the spending is actually a lot higher. So in my original model, I had us getting profitable in 2025. I basically had the high watermark being 2022 in terms of losses and spending. But we heard previously him talking about the increase in spending for Neutron and how we're not even at that low watermark for that EBITDA loss number. So we can expect that to potentially even increase. That means that 2023 is probably going to have a higher loss than 2022. Uh, so we, we need to adjust all those for sure. Now on to the updated 2023 model. So across the top here, we have revenues. I pulled those numbers straight from where I already showed you, uh, and I already told you the thought process behind those revenue numbers. Now we have certain costs that are not included in uh, the cost of those products. We have general and administration. We have R&D expenses, whereas in the previous revenue, 
page, all I was showing you was the cost of goods sold. So that's the cost to actually build and launch those rockets or those satellites. And it doesn't take into account things like the back office staff, the sales staff, uh, research and development of future products and things like that. Those gross margins were strictly how much it cost them to sell that product. That means these numbers are going to change a lot. So we have in, in 2021, they lost about $117 million. Uh, these numbers are obviously set. It's in the past. 2022, we see they burned about $135 million. And uh, now we're looking into the future to see what we think. So I, my revenue number is $315 million, as I showed you previously. And I uh, am increasing the SGNA number slightly by about 10%. That seems like a pretty reasonable number to me. If you look at how other companies generally go, their SGNA increases pretty regularly in that kind of ballpark, I would say. I do have a pretty decent jump up here for R&D expenses for Neutron, uh, talking about, you know, the high water or low watermark not even being hit yet. We're looking at not hitting that until 2024 towards the second half when Neutron launches. So we're looking at more spending for Neutron in the future, and uh, that's kind of showing in the numbers here. So this means we're looking at uh, an EBITDA number uh, before taxes and all those things of around negative 120 million and uh, net income number next year of negative 145 million, which is obviously burning more than we did in 2022. And by the way, these numbers uh, jive pretty closely with uh, what Adam said in terms of that negative 28 to 30 million number for Q1. If you think about annualizing that for the year and maybe increasing it slightly. 2024, uh, I have my top line number as well as some minor increases to SGNA as well as R&D. Uh, but then we're kind of hitting the hump and getting over it in terms of spending the most for Neutron. So we're burning a slightly more in 2024. We're burning $147 million as that Neutron spending is really outstripping the improvements from Electron and Space Systems. Now, 2025, uh, obviously, we're up to $700 million in revenue. We have some modest increases in SG&A and r and I'm actually dropping that as we're kind of finished the R&D on Neutron, and now it's more operations. So uh, hopefully, we can see a little bit of a drop in R&D and... Um, we're getting close to the break-even number now in 2025. It doesn't quite break even based on these numbers. So that's definitely pushing back profitability compared to where I had it previously on the old model. The good news, though, is that we are profitable in 2026. We're bringing in over a billion dollars in revenue, and uh, we are finally breaking even. So uh, unfortunately, it's a little further out, but hopefully uh, once we do break even, those revenue numbers will continue to grow rapidly due to all these investments. Uh, 2027, I have us at $1.375 billion. And uh, 2028, $2 billion. And in terms of net income, we're looking at a little shy of $500 million in 2028. Now, these numbers are pretty conservative. I'm looking at their original projections from when they went public here in this chart. We can see they had actually 2027, uh, $1.5 billion in revenue projected. They, they made this chart a couple years ago, so I'm thinking... Um, Scaling that back slightly, being a bit conservative, in my 2027, I have 1.375 versus there's 1.5. So we're playing it on the safe side, thinking maybe they'll miss this projection, but they'll still, you know, be profitable and making money at that point. So uh, once we have the net income number in 2028, now we can start to figure out how much the company as a whole is worth, because really at the end of the day, it's just worth the uh, the future cash flows is really what the value of the company is. So we know the outstanding shares currently are 476 million. That's likely to increase a bit, but for now we're just going to go 476 million, and um, we can divide that net income number by the number of shares, multiply it 
by a price to earnings multiple we think is fair to get a terminal value in 2028. So I landed on $26 per share here in 2028, which is obviously well up from the sub $4 we're at right now. Uh, that's based on a 28 price to earnings multiple. I felt like that was fairly reasonable. I've looked at some comps in the past. I think Maxar was trading at like a 25, 30 at times. Uh, some faster growing companies have been known to trade at 100 plus times earnings, um, depending on how fast the revenue growth is expected to continue in the future. And obviously, I think with this company and space applications, the revenue growth will be expected to continue in the future in 2028. So I think 28 is a pretty reasonable multiple, but if you think that's unfair, uh, we can always lower it or raise it depending on what you believe. So if we want to put in a 20, which is quite cheaper, that means the value in 2028 is now $19 a share. Still a good return on your investment today. Uh, nothing to scoff at for sure. Uh, if you want to do really conservative, $15 or 15 price to earnings, now we're looking at 14 dollars per share. Uh, below that, below the tens, you're really looking at banks, dividend stocks, really safe stocks that um, are very steady and not expecting high growth is where you get into the single digit price to earnings. But for a company like Rocket Lab, I feel like, you know, 28 could be pretty reasonable. Uh, it's potential if, you know, people get really excited about the company, it could run up even higher, in which case uh, we'd all would be very happy as shareholders. But I don't like to make those kinds of assumptions. But once you think about the terminal value in 2022, you have to decide how much that money is worth today. So uh, like what kind of return do you expect on your money? And uh, obviously money in the future is worth less than money in your pocket today. So how does that work out? Well, basically, uh, I'm putting a discount rate of 12% per year on this. So we roll back the value by 12% per the number of years we're going out into the future, which is $5. So in terms of today's value, we're looking at $14 per share uh, if you roll back that 12% a year. And this, I think, is pretty reasonable. Uh, I've seen a lot of people go as low as 5%, and 12% uh, for a growth company in this kind of market we're in, I think, is fine. So that's where I landed on that. Uh, and th then I just also included the chart of how they uh, projected their own earnings in the future. I'm actually pretty close a lot of the way through in terms of the top line versus them. I kind of play it a bit safer, and as I said, we don't quite meet their numbers in 2027 but still uh still good performance and uh, definitely if you if you think it's really going to be worth 26 dollars per share in five years like you've, you've got to love that return really you can't complain obviously it is a higher risk company and um here's the downside to my updates though let's look at this cash balance so they're going to be spending a lot more than I was thinking in my previous model. Uh, we're not going to become profitable until more like 2026. And the cash balance, we're currently at just shy of 500 million. We can see that judging by this model, we're looking at uh, bottoming uh, around 132 million in the bank, which is starting to get a little uncomfortable for me. This is why I kind of hope they don't acquire any more companies, at least for cash. Because if if we're sitting here in, you know, 2024, and we've got say 150 million dollars in the bank, Neutron has some problem. It explodes. It's going to cost a ton of money to figure out what's going on. We can't launch until then. Some kind of disaster like that happens. Um, you might start to feel uncomfortable with, you know, sub $200 million in the bank, which is, you know, one of the reasons I liked Rocket Lab from the get-go is because they had like $700 million on the balance sheet. So yeah, the bad side of the model with this spending is that we're, we're going closer to having to raise more capital than I had originally anticipated. And obviously you don't want to raise capital at a valuation like we're at today. You would like to do that at a higher valuation. So uh, I think 132 million is still okay, but obviously as we're watching, if it looks like they're having trouble and we're gonna go closer and closer to below $100 million on the balance sheet, then we would have to start to get 
really concerned and um, the company might have to start thinking about raising money or taking on more debt or those sorts of things, which we kind of hope they don't have to do. So that would be the bad news, whereas the good news would be this potential number of uh, $26 per share in 2028. I know a lot of you guys don't want to wait to 2028. Maybe you've already been a shareholder for a while and uh, <laughs> you want your returns now. But uh, as a long-term investor, uh, this is just kind of how it goes. And um, yeah, the other piece of bad news I would say is the delayed profitability because I find companies often get a big bump when they turn profitable and you don't have to worry anymore about raising more money or ever going out of business uh, now we're looking at 2026 for that, so still three years away from today. So uh, if you're looking for a big bump from the company going profitable, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news that from this model at least, it looks like it may get pushed out further to 2026. Uh, my last tab here is just some data from some previous years to reference. Uh, but that's pretty much it for the model. I still plan to continue tinkering with these numbers. I think I might end up increasing how much uh, they, they grow on space systems. And, um, you know, it, it could even get better potentially, or we could uh, change the multiples. Uh, there's a lot that you could change depending on your own personal opinions on what's fair for the company. Uh, please do let me know down below what numbers do you think you would have changed? Do you think 16 neutron launches, launches in 2028 is too low? Uh, what kind of numbers do you think we're looking at for neutron for launches as well as cost per launch? Uh, how fast do you think space systems is going to grow? And would you start modeling in some space applications money, that recurring revenue where Rocket Lab owns their own satellites and provides the data as a service? Uh, let me know what you think of the model. I'll be sure to check out your comments below. So thanks for bearing with me through all the spreadsheets. I think it really is important to have a deeper understanding of the financial health of a company you're investing in, especially one that's not yet profitable and uh, is a growth company for the future. I do plan on continuing to make more charts and, and visuals for Rocket Lab and their financials in the future, so stay tuned for that as well as my regular Rocket Lab content. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and uh, we do have a Discord server down in the description below as well if you're interested in joining. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.